generations. And now, the power of two restores the one. We got a bidet! Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're talking about the latest episode of The Bad Batch. We only got one this week, so uh, it was just a quick little, I would say, one shot in a way. If you have played D&D &D or something, that's basically what it was. A little side story that very, very loosely, you know, is connected to the rest of it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about what happened and give some of our thoughts. So uh, we do get a character visiting back from i believe it was season two that we met this character it's very brief it was fee uh supposedly fee has been looking into what this m count thing could be for the bad batch uh the group is still you know hanging out on pavu uh, hunt not hunter crosshair is you know trying to deal with his condition that he's got going on you know he's had a little bit of a problem with being able to aim because his arm is uh, un involuntarily moving um, so what we get is that fee doesn't really know what's going on with this m count thing but she knows somebody that might be able to help her out because she knows that there are bounty hunters that are searching for something that's related to this m count for the empire that's not news to us to, as the audience, but it's a little bit, you know, like a, hey, watch out for the Bad Batch. So Hunter tells Omega that her and Crosshair have to stay behind while Hunter and Wrecker go off and try to meet with this bounty hunter. And the bounty hunter is Fennec. So we get another episode with Fennec. We had some in previous seasons, of course. We had the one where... Uh, Fennec was trying to take Omega herself. So this is kind of why uh, Hunter and Wrecker are a little bit iffy about going to meet up with Fennec. Um, so Omega does stay behind. She does listen. I kind of wondered if maybe she was going to, you know, try to swindle her way on this trip, but she doesn't. I think it's because he Hunter's learning to give her better reasoning, like, it's not just stay behind because I said so. In this one, it was stay behind. See if you can get Crosshair to get his arm looked at. Like, basically giving her something of you need to take care of him. Yeah, they're starting I, to look after each other a little bit. I kind of got that vibe from that request, but I also at the same time kind of wondered, it's kind of like, you know, when you tell a little kid they can't come because of, you know, these reasons you don't want to tell them, but at the same time, you're like, I'll give him a little side job just to, you know, keep him occupied. I kind of wondered if that was what was going on there. But yeah, it could be them trying to treat her more like an adult and have her look after Crosshair. I see both sides of it. I mean, I think it was a, a bit of both. I think it was more so they're trying to protect her. Um, so they obviously know that. And obviously, if it's if she's that valuable to the bounty hunters, they obviously don't want to bring Omega straight to them. Might, right straight to them. So I think it was just a little bit of future proofing maybe. And they're planning, you know, the bad batch. They're, they're always smart with their plans. All 99 of them. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, this little thing, like we, we mentioned that, Hunter wants Omega to look over Crosshair, but like the specific thing that he wants her to do is to try to convince Crosshair to seek some help with his arm because he's been very, very stubborn about it. We see that, you know, he wants to uh, do target practice and try to basically beat what is going on with him, but ultimately he does need some medical attention. Um, so at this point, we kind of split. Uh, Hunter and Wrecker go their way, and then uh, Omega and Crosshair stay behind. Uh, 
Hunter and Wrecker do find Fennec at a bar. I did not quite pick up on what planet they were on, per se. Wasn't it, um, it was like a space station or something. It was like a, it looked like an hourglass Oh, kind that's of. right. I did see that shot. Um, I guess I just didn't make the connection. Because it looked kind of like Coruscant, but I was like, I don't really think it is. Yeah. Um, and they, it's weird. They like, it's, they carpool there and then they, they take Fennec's ship from there and then they go back there to drop the Bad Batch off. And then, so you see it like a couple times in the episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was kind of weird um so when they're talking with fennec uh they're basically telling her hey we know about this m count thing and we need to find more information about it and fennec is leading on that she might have some information she doesn't have all of it but she might have some information and instead of them paying for this information she wants them to do a, a little side mission for her which if you've seen bad batch in the past you probably could have predicted that that was going to happen especially since they had to fill the next 15 minutes um so they do agree reluctantly and we learn that there is this was he a bounty hunter himself um I think so. Yeah, you get the mantis dude. Yeah, he yeah. He was somebody. I thought he was like a smuggler or something, but double crossed one of the bad syndicates or something along those lines. He like took out some people, made some enemies, stole a bunch of money or credits. Yeah, and now they want him, and I believe they want him, from what I remember, alive. Mm -hmm. So that's our little mission for. Hunter and Wrecker and Fennec actually goes along for the ride too. Uh, so the, the deal is, is if they're able to capture this bounty that Fennec will give them information, but also Fennec gets all the money. So our bad batch people will not get any money for this service. So they have to deal with that as well. It's kind um, of something they're used to though, because they never have any money. So they didn't have any to give her in the first place. Well, what's what's the next thing that they can do is provide a service. Yeah. What do these guys do? They don't have any money. How do they eat? It's uh, their benefactors. I think they were living off of, I mean, their intel and their odd jobs from Sid, right? That was like all of last season. Either that or just mooching off of the residents of Pabu. Yeah. I yeah. Now that they're that. at Pabu, they're, they're living nice. They're living well. Basically a commune, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Or maybe uh, they're off screen taking Omega to all these casinos so she can just rip that gambling money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fast credits. You got it. <laughs> yeah. So throughout the rest of the episode, we kind of bounce back and forth between uh, our trio with Hunter, Wrecker, and Fennec, and then also Crosshair and uh, Omega. She does convince Crosshair to go and get his arm looked at. And from what I gathered, the droid basically said that uh, he has no hope with his arm. Uh, something's definitely wrong with it, and it's impossible to heal or fix him. And so I know I believe it happens later on, but um, like bet between shots between uh, our two groups, but Omega basically has this idea of, hey, one of the things that's helped me out in the past is uh, doing this exercise, which is essentially meditation. And so it, she... it seemed like the droid was almost trying to tell Crosshair that he needed therapy. Like, like if you open up more about the testing that was being done to you, then maybe we can help you. And you could take that one of two ways, right? One is like, well, if you tell us what kind of chemicals they injected you with, maybe we can counteract that. But also kind of from a psychological standpoint. But he, either way, he wasn't having any of that. He's like, nope, not talking about it. Mm -hmm. That was kind of what I picked up too, is that it seemed more like a psychological thing. Um, basically, AZ, the droid, told him, you know, we've done everything that medical attention can do for your hand. Um, that's not going to get any better. So that's kind of how I took it, is that it was kind of like a mental thing. But yeah, you're exactly right. He got tested on and experimented on. So we don't really know any of those details. 
Um, maybe if there's something that they, you know, injected him with, maybe that was the problem. And maybe if they knew what it was, they could, you know, try to counter it. There's a couple funny lines throughout this episode, one of which being between um, Crosshair and Omega in this scene. And she's like, I, I have an idea, but you're going to have to trust me. He goes, I'm not going to like it, Anna, am I? She goes, well, you don't like anything. Yeah, <laughs> fair point. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, I will wrap up the Omega and Crosshair portion here real quick. That way we can focus on the rest of the episode. But the yeah, boat. basic. What's that? The boat in the swamp. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> um, uh, Omega basically is introducing some meditation practice to Crosshair. And we get some really nice, like, animated shots of, you know, the horizon and stuff. And it kind of seems like maybe they're really starting to become at peace. And I don't know about you guys, but part of, like, with, with them, like, I know we just talked about the uh, testing and stuff. But I also kind of wonder, with them saying, oh, it's impossible to heal your arm, I kind of wondered if maybe one of Omega's next things that we learn about her is that she could force heal and maybe she'll heal his arm or something um i'm hoping they don't go there but uh it does seem like they're they are going that direction with the uh, force sensitivity um i would hope that that would be a skill that would be learned but maybe it could be learned through doing it one time um but I feel like if she was going to be, if he was able to be force healed, then wouldn't the droid have been able to heal him from like a medical standpoint? Isn't it kind of like a either or they both work the same? It's just different ways of implementing the healing. Like if he can't be medically healed, then I don't know that he could be force healed. That I don't know. Yeah, I don't know too much about the force healing i want to say it was kind of like a transfer right like you kind of transfer some of your you know i don't want to get into that <laughs> but it's an interesting topic to think about you are correct with the the transfer thing but yeah that is a little bit of an odd topic um that they brought out in episode nine um mm -hmm. because i don't really think it had been that way in the past but anyway yeah. so but, yeah. oh, I mean, she did learn the meditation from, like, the Jedi. So, I mean, that we're kind of on that same mindset, at least. Right. Yeah, I do think probably by the end of all this, she... I don't know. Maybe she'll end up going with some Jedi by the end of all this, but... Mm -hmm. I could think of one. They might be a bounty hunter. We don't know. Yeah. Uh... Towards the end of the episode, we have some speculation. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the rest of the stuff that's going on is with our other trio, Hunter, Wrecker, and Fennec. And uh, our Bad Batch pair find out that they're looking for somebody named Siler. Um, and they learn this from Fennec. We get like a little um, hologram of what he looks like. And uh, Austin mentioned he kind of looks like a praying mantis in a way. Uh, with a knife. Yeah. And he's, really located, big he's located on a planet that has some toxic air. So uh, our Bad Batch and Fennec have to be careful when they're on the planet to make sure like they keep their helmets on. Uh, and she also has some sort of breathing thing that she's got. Um, Fennec does buy a boat because so, they have to go off to some, you know, thick of the jungle so to speak it's kind of like a rainforest looking scenario i thought this basically looked well the boat looked like the boat that rambo got in rambo 4 so that was kind of interesting and then the the vibe of the episode i kind of got like an anaconda vibe if you've ever seen that movie from the 90s with ice cube and j-lo and all them and so i kind of wondered if maybe there was going to be you know a water monster because of that connection and sure enough fennec just does warn them hey don't go in the water something you know is out there and so eventually they come up to this area where hunter and wrecker notice that there are these mines in the water 
And so you can't go past the mines without tripping the wines. And so they have to go in the water, right? So as they're working on this, they are attracting attention with all their splashing around and moving of the water. And so we do find out that there are like these gator looking creatures uh, that lurk the waters and they come after the group. Let's see. Did you guys think it was going to be something a little more Star Wars-y or did you, were you okay with it being basically alligators? Uh, I was okay with it. I thought it, I mean, it felt like a swamp monster. They, they have like usable arms instead of like little crocodile arms. Oh, okay. I didn't notice that. But they had, I mean, they took the, alligators are known for having like, I think, pretty dense or hard skin, but they really took that to the next level. It looked like they were very like armored kind of on the top. Um And I also thought that maybe we would see like a really big one at some point, but they were all kind of just the same size. Yeah, I was kind of wondering that too, to see, like, you know, so I guess to kind of go along with that, they do have like a small scuffle with these small ones and they are able to get away. But like you said, it was kind of like maybe after they thought they were getting away, there would be this big one. But really what happens is once they think that they get away, one more of them jumps onto the boat and we get uh, this interesting uh, interaction with Wrecker where he was like, king of the rainforest or whatever and throws the gator back into the waters Yeah. And Fennec is trying to like shoot them this whole time and I think she she hits them a couple times but her gun doesn't do too much to the gators. They're pretty uh tough. right So yeah it's it's a wrecker hunter show. that's why she brought them Mhm. Mm and she wasn't sufficient She wouldn't have sufficed. Yep. But she's awesome, right? Yeah. So our trio do eventually get to where they're supposed to be heading towards, where, you know, Fennec thinks that this dude is at. And they come up to a what I would call a raised home. It was kind of like a tree house. They had to climb a ladder to go up to the house. And it was actually a really nice shot of, like, when... um. Wrecker and Hunter are walking into the house and it kind of it's almost like a horror movie where the camera is following them. But we see up in the corner that that's where the bounty actually is. And he's kind of hunting yeah, like them. It's like pop open. <laughs> yeah. So it was really cool how they introduced the dude. You know, it's supposed to be this evil, sinister kind of guy. And that's exactly what they portrayed with that. Um But we do get a scuffle, of course, between the group and this dude. Uh, kind of holds his own for a little while, but ultimately he is going to be taken in. Um, I didn't think there was anything too crazy with this battle that was like, you know, out there, super awesome. I don't know about you guys. At one point, he took the boat, but before he was able to go anywhere, Fennec was there to You know, to say, like, did you really think I'd let you escape? Well, I think she snipped the wires herself, didn't she? Maybe to his yes. boat, but then he was going to steal oh. their boat. Gotcha. Yeah, But... she she disconnected the wire on her boat before leaving it. That way he couldn't steal it. So I just thought that was pretty cool. A little sneaky. Yeah, the guy was very prepared. He had a trap door through the treehouse and almost got away if it weren't for Fennec. He knew he was a dude that was in trouble, so I guess that would uh, make you want to almost like booby trap your house or make sure you have all these alternative exits. Get away yeah. plan. Fennec does stun him eventually, and she's able to take him Three uh, times. outside. Yeah, multiple times. So she's It's able a lot to of... take him uh, alive and not dead. What were you saying, Austin? It just takes a lot of stuns for that guy. Maybe he had armor like those crocodiles. I don't know. Maybe. Thick skinned. Yeah. Our last part here for the episode uh, is our trio heading back. Of course, like Austin mentioned before, the group does need their ship back and they left it behind at the carpool station. And um, Fennec basically reveals to them that, hey, she really doesn't have any information, which is kind of a, you know... 
part of the episode, in my opinion. But she might know somebody that does. Well, she she says she has it. She doesn't doesn't have it with her. Right, but like her herself, she doesn't know anything. It's she know she has connections to be able to possibly find something for the group. Yeah, she left the information in her other pair of pants. It's <laughs> it, it happens to everybody. Right, <laughs> right. Um, so she goes in her cockpit and shuts the door so that Wrecker and Hunter can't see who it is. And Dave Filoni pulls the same thing he did, I believe, for the Rebels show, where we see the the character that we've been following this whole time talking to somebody on a hologram, but we don't know who is the hologram. And was there a distorted voice, too? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think he could recognize it. I'm, I couldn't it, recognize the voice. Pretty sure this is what they did for Fulcrum as well, uh, when Ahsoka was eventually revealed later on in that show. Um, but what we kind of know from the trailers is that, you know, maybe this person is going to end up being Ventress because um, she pops up at some point. Right. And she was a force sensitive being in the past. And what makes me wonder is like, how does an M count just come up in conversation? Like, why would she, for one why does Fennec really know about it? Like when the Empire is saying to these bounty hunters, hey, I'm looking for this thing with an M count. How have the bounty hunters made a connection with Mandalorians like the or, um, midichlorians? How does that come up in conversation, you think? Well, depending on who it is, I mean, if it is uh, Ventress, then Ventress would know about midichlorians, perhaps. I mean, I don't know if she would, but you would think. Um, and if she's a bounty hunter these days, I mean, we don't really know what she's up to. If she's just bounty hunting these days, being force sensitive and having a lightsaber or multiple lightsabers would probably make you a pretty good bounty hunter. Um, so I think she would maybe even be tracking down, um, you know, some of these M count. Uh, cases like Fennec was hired by the Kaminoans, but maybe if the Empire needs a job done, they're going to hire Ventress or something. I don't know. Right. It makes sense that they would reveal like, hey, I need you to retrieve this bounty. They have a, a high M count or whatever, because and I'm telling you this, that we know that they're force sensitive, like they might try to pull one on you, try to try to make it easier for them to be caught but what's weird to me is how would they know that they have a high m count like they know omega does because they've had her in their hands and been doing tests and stuff but are there really that many people yeah. or force sensitive people with high m counts that are not only having the high m count but also in cap captivity and then escaping and needing a bounty to get them back like it seems like that's a very unlikely scenario well that's what i was ultimately getting at with my question is like is it common knowledge that jedi have a high m count or force sensitive people have a high m count or do people just make the connection of oh they're a jedi and they have these force abilities like is that something that's talked about a lot i don't like i i understand that you know qui-gon kind of told anakin in episode one and but it's not like he's talking to you know um politicians and stuff like oh this m right and it's you know a, a conversation that everybody has yeah no i i i think you're absolutely on the right track um i don't think it's like super common knowledge at all i think like it's something jedi might know about and um kind of goes hand in hand with that but it's something the sith would probably know about um so um you know anyone who's forced you know, been trained in the force. I think they probably would know as far as anybody else. Um, it'd have to be just like word of mouth kind of stuff. I don't know, you know, the empire's pretty sloppy, so maybe they are talking too much. I don't know. I don't know how everybody's finding out about it. I mean, it seems like the general, like no one in our group really knows what it means. Like they keep saying the words, but they don't really know what it means at all. Well, even was it Rex had said, like, I've heard of this thing, but I don't know what it is. I feel like if anybody 
would have known what that was, he would have. Right. Right. Plot twist. Fennec is a Jedi, and that's why she knows about this M count thing. <laughs> <laughs> Arabot is a Jedi. Yeah, who knows? Everybody keeps double crossing our group. Right. Yeah, how did I have trust issues yet? Yeah, I mean, Fennec straight up asks them, like, if you guys are trusting me right now, you must be pretty desperate for this information. Um, because you guys hate me, mm -hmm. basically, is what she says. <laughs> so, I don't know about you guys, but I, I'm hesitant to say this, but I kind of feel like when we first see Fennec at the bar and stuff, I kind of felt like her line delivery was kind of stale or bland. Like it, 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 I don't know what it was. It didn't feel like Fennec. Yeah. I think it was just, those scenes were pretty quick. So her dialogue kind of just moves the plot along. There wasn't really a whole lot of like showing I don't know. Kind of what we were just talking about. Like, they don't really want to work with her, but they kind of have to go through this. So they kind of like hash out their real, their deal real quick and then they're gone. Um, rather than seeing them kind of like have to like it would have been kind of kind of neat if we got like a scene where either Hunter or Wrecker, I don't know which one would be more upset, but maybe they're like, absolutely not. We will not work with you under any circumstances. And then maybe the other guy pulls them aside and they go have like a one-on-one, -on -one, like, hey, we have to do this for Omega. Like, so you see them kind of struggle with it a bit more, but I understand that we don't have time for all that with the with the 30 minute runtime or whatever. But we, but. but we do have time for it if they make time for it. If they if chop they make credits time. down from eight minutes down to two, we can make some room. Yeah, you're right about that. <laughs> Can't I feel move. like her body language was just a little too relaxed, so that could have been part of it too. Yeah. So I think I looked it up. I'm pretty sure next week we get one episode and then the week after that is when we get another two pairing. Okay. So I don't know. Maybe we do meet this hologram person in the next one and then the that's kind of like them getting to know who they are and then that two for episode is actually doing something with that individual yeah it's possible um we didn't i mean obviously this one leaves us with the hologram cliffhanger so how mean are they gonna be you know hopefully they give us that reveal um pretty soon but we didn't really talk about um so the last two episodes was the whole espionage thing with the shadow guy um, oh, yeah. where Rex's compound and all his boys got uh, killed, basically. Oh, um, yeah. Whatever happened with that? Come on. So they like they, they kind of mention it in passing um, in the beginning of this episode because Omega is hanging on to her communicator waiting for Echo to, co to contact them. Um, and then Crosshair is like, hey, you know, waiting for the call is not going to make them call any faster. Um, so we don't actually, you know, we weren't really sure what steps the Bad Bats were going to take about this Omega situation. But it seems like they're jumping right on it. Like they're pursuing this, like we got to find out this M count business. Um, but yeah, I was going to ask you guys what you think Rex and Echo are up to. What would their next move have been, you know? after their compound getting attacked and everything. See, I wasn't so focused on that because I I don't know. It just it seems like Wolf's storyline might be a little more interesting to me. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering what are the repercussions that him and his group are going to have to deal with and how does this make the Empire react? Yeah, that's true. We didn't get to see any of that, really. Any of that fallout. Because in terms of Rex and Echo, I guess I figured they just had another base somewhere else that they could go regroup and rebuild and whatever. Yeah, you're probably right. I kind of wonder 
Um, well, for one, I didn't even pick up on that, so I'm glad you brought it up. Um, but I kind of wonder, it seems like they're very subtly planting the this, this seed of, you know, at first Omega was the one that wanted to at some point go back to Tantus and free the clones and all that. And then they mentioned it to them. And now um, Rex was talking to Wolf saying, hey, things aren't as good as you think they are. They're actually doing bad things to our brothers. And so I kind of wonder if they're planning the seed along to maybe lead to the finale where they go after their brothers and try to free them from Tantus and maybe blow up the base or something. But I kind of wonder if that's what they're up to. They're trying to uh, not only talk to their own group, but maybe find some other clones because we had that like farmer clone. I don't remember if it was season one or season two where they're just kind of remotely living somewhere and also... Austin, I think you mentioned last week that in Rebels, there was a whole group of these clones that aren't together right now. There's got to be something that brings them together. Maybe this is that transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then in Rebels, when they're really old, um, it's only three of them. It's just Rex, Wolf, and I want to say it's Gregor, but I can't remember the third one for sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, they, they must do one last mission together at some point. Um, so hopefully we do get to see that. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I, I feel like there's too much attention that they're giving to the idea of going back to not go back. Mm -hmm. Especially with us being a series finale. Especially since Tech is still alive, right? Right. You're going to have to let him go, Jeremy. As much as I love him, he's done. He's gone. Goodbye. It's Don't not work. a it's not a me thing. It's a pattern from Disney kind of thing. Like I don't really foresee that being set in stone, but uh, I would not be surprised if that ends up being a thing. Mhm. Mm um, did you guys watch the trailer for this season when that came out? I did, but it's been a long time. Yeah, I haven't watched it in a long time either, but I remember, I'm pretty sure they showed us another bounty hunter in the... Did they not show, um, like, Cad Bane in the trailer? I thought they did. So, there's, like, a small percent chance that's who Fennec was contacting, but I just could wanted be. to bring it up. It could be, could be oh, a different bounty hunter, awesome. hypo hypothetically. Yeah, because that's where my mind went originally when Fennec was contacting somebody. I thought, this two-timing, double-crossing, <laughs> Fennec Shan, can't believe it. Um, but, believe it. Yeah. It's probably Ventress, but it'd be cool if it was Cad Bane. <laughs> but they might use him for something, something better later on. I'm just waiting for all the bounty hunters to go after Omega and have it be them all duking it out together. Yeah, fighting each other. That'd be cool. So I just pulled up the trailer to try to get like a reminder and even the opening shot from the trailer, I don't think we've seen yet. We definitely haven't seen it yet. Okay. Um, Because the opening shot is Fee helping them with a mission. So, yeah. So... We got a lot of episodes. This goes until um, like May May fourth or something, right? Yeah, right up until uh, I would say because it's like this ends and then they release the Phantom Menace in theaters again, and then there's actually an acolyte thing attached to that movie. So then we get to see that the following month. Hmm. Yeah. All lined up. All right. Was there anything else uh, you guys wanted to bring up from this one? I think we pretty much touched on everything I. Uh, I did like the Mantis dude. I thought he was pretty awesome. I would I agree. Liked his creepiness. Yeah. Um, no, but there's nothing else. Uh, like you said, this was kind of like a, a nice little um, short episode. Like I said, it was kind of like a one off or one shot story and, you know, very little connection to what we're overall doing. 
Um, I kind of wonder if the biggest takeaway is what's going on with Omega and Crosshair. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see next week to see if we get more uh, from what's going on with Fennec in the cockpit and who she's talking to. So that was our discussion on the latest episode of The Bad Batch. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. That way you are notified when the next one drops. We do these every week, and we're always excited to talk about the latest Star Wars stuff. Drops a like if you like the video, and drops a comment letting us know your thoughts on this week's episode. And then, as always, everybody, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.